Chelsea won, Crystal Palace won. An uninspiring game, to be completely honest with you. I think Chelsea are really showing how this season's going to go. It's one win, one loss and one draw going into the international break. Quite honestly, it's not good enough. I think we saw today how much we were in dire need of that striker joining on deadline day. We also saw cameos from players again um, that probably weren't good enough. And we saw performances across 90 minutes again that weren't good enough for Chelsea. Look, I don't want to sit here and be negative. I want Chelsea to win games of football. I have to be honest with you. There's no agendas here on this channel. And, and I think people get sometimes get the wrong idea. But there isn't a lot of positives to be taken at the moment. The first half, the goal we scored was really good. Like The counter-attack was fantastic. I have to praise that. We counter-attack really, really well against Wolves. But to lose 2-1 against Savet midweek and have that game as our reaction, it's not good enough for me. Second half, not good at all. Really, really poor, substandard. Um, I saw so many players throughout the game get misprofiled into positions that I just don't think suit them. We saw Wesley Fofana play the majority of the game as a right back. We saw Casado play the majority of the second half as a centre back and in the first half as well. Enzo Fernandez is being asked to play in a much more advanced role when we all know last season that didn't work and he's being asked to do the same again. He didn't have a great game. I don't want to get on his back again and again and again, but without Enzo in the team last year, we moved up the table with him in it. It's not looking good. The only positive I can say on Enzo Fernandez is maybe the pass to Madueke when. Madueke ended up making Henderson pull off an unbelievable save. And defensively, in like the final moment, I think Enzo Fernandez was there, but might have caused himself an injury. Other than that, I felt like Enzo gave the ball away. His passes lacked creativity. His passes lacked any real sort of um, like punch to them. They always lack a bit of power. There's no possibility to turn on the back of Enzo's passes. And a weird game for him. And I, that's one I want to get off the bat straight away because a lot of people are talking about Enzo Fernandez's performance today. Some people are praising it. Some people aren't happy. So straight away, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Where do you sit with Enzo Fernandez right now? He's obviously been at Chelsea for quite a while. He's wearing the captain's armband. We paid a lot of money for him. And, and personally, I don't think we're seeing the type of return we should be from the amount of money and expectation that would be on his shoulders Let's look around the rest of the team and, and analyse what Maresca did as a coach today as well. Um, like I've already stated, we saw a lot of players sort of pick up flexible positions where on in possession they, they would be asked to do something and defensively asked to do something else. Um, I'm not sure it's working to the benefit of the team. I understand that these players are going off into these positions and they're trying to do something when they're there. Like Wesley Fofana at right back. Look, fair enough. He, he didn't do the worst job today, but I actually don't understand what was the point of ever asking him to play there because by asking him to play at right back and by pushing Gusto up into a gap between Cole Palmer and Madueke, it kind of made them a little bit more claustrophobic. It put a little bit more area of traffic in the pitch that wasn't needed. Um, whereas actually at right back, I think Gusto's shown that he's quite capable of affecting the game from that area even with a winger like Madueke in front of him. He can go inside or outside Gusto. Um, Fafana, I don't understand what that offered by him drifting out onto the right. And then Casado basically vacated any role that he had in the midfield and dropped in alongside Levi Colwell to become a centre-back in possession. And then as soon as we got dispossessed, Casado basically just had to wait for Palace's midfield to come onto him. And Fafana and Gusto would track back in front of him. And, and that just didn't make any sense to me as why that would be the right thing to do because in the second half as poor as Palace were all game by the way they weren't very good today um that is where Palace found opportunities to go forward they just lacked anything going further forward than that because quite honestly they don't look anywhere near uh, where they were at the end of last season and neither did Chelsea you can't sit here and tell me right now that the football we're playing is better than what we saw under Pochettino towards the end of last season and I'm not going to sit here and be a massive advocate for Poch staying but I haven't I believe that his removal from the club would lead to better football would lead to a manager that understood this playing squad a little bit better I can't say I'm seeing that yet I can't say I've seen enough evidence to suggest that Chelsea are in a better position now than where we finished last season and we absolutely should be I believe the squad is probably better bar maybe the centre-backs 
other than that, I genuinely think, like for like, it's a bit stronger than it was last season. And I don't really see any evident improvement. I'm not going to get on Maresca's back and start saying that he needs to be out. But everyone told me that the football we're going to see will be way more suited to this team. The only clear idea I've seen of this Chelsea team having any idea of how to attack under Maresca is on the counter-attack. In possession against a mid or a low block, we look just as clueless as we did last year under Pochettino. The football is so slow, it's not entertaining. In terms of trying to move teams around with a little bit of tempo on the ball, but being patient in the build-up, we're not doing that. We take far too many touches defensively. The defenders have the ball for way too long in comparison to the players that make things happen. I'm not seeing this entertaining style of football. I said on the live reaction, people asked me, what should good football look like? And I told them that I think good football should look like a technical side who are able to play at a good tempo with a patient build-up with defenders taking limited touches or if the gap is there move themselves through the team to create opportunities and allow players to move around how many times today did I see Levi Colwell put his foot on the ball and just wait for something to happen you you need to be able to go forward as a defender now in the modern game and allow players to be able to move because as you step forward into a team's defensive block players will have to come out of their positions, which allows other players on your team to find space. That didn't happen today. Colwell sat there so many times and just passed the ball sideways off to Kukurea. I barely saw us try to play through. At times, we did okay, and then we were wasteful. I saw Enzo Fernandez be wasteful in the first half an awful lot. I saw Cole Palmer not have his best game, but he's still always probably the shining light in this team. Madueki was wasteful at times today. Definitely not as clinical as he was against Wolves. Um, Nicholas Jackson. Look, the guy scored. He scored in an open goal, and he can't miss that one. Um, Cole Palmer obviously got that assist, which is why I sort of say that he is the shining light because he's always the guy trying to make something happen. Nicholas Jackson then turns around like he's scoring these unbelievable goals. But when it really mattered in terms of winning the game, Nicholas Jackson didn't have enough. And that's why I think all of us as Chelsea fans were so insistent on Chelsea trying to sign a striker that was the level above Jackson, someone like a Victor Osserman that would arguably have been able to score and convert those chances that Jackson hasn't been able to do today. Um, I look at Pedro Neto. It's a cameo. He's getting used to the team. It probably wasn't great. The same with Mudrick again. There was one moment that I felt was okay. Kukurea, it's a sort of headless performance as per usual. Um, but also, he, he kind of just gets his job done. I don't think that Palace posed much of a threat anywhere today. I have to question us defensively on set pieces. We've got a new set piece coach in now. Over the course of this season, I've not seen an improvement in terms of what we're doing at set pieces. Attacking wise, nothing. For the first half, Cole Palmer's corners were to the near post and Palace absolutely have that covered. Don't get me wrong, we sort of changed it up second half, went a little bit deeper and sometimes we created a bit of a half chance for a corner, but nothing really clear cut. I can kind of picture Levi Colwell having a really good opportunity once or twice but not being able to convert the chance defensively I saw time and time again Kukurea marking Mateta uh, I saw Enzo Fernandez I think marking Mark Gehi so many times our defensive setup didn't look right at set pieces and I think that was a bit of an issue today I think ultimately Palace's goal came from a set piece setup that was all over the place if you go to that free kick that Eze had and he does the little dink We've got our defensive line split with huge gaps all the way along the edge of the 18-yard box and very deep as well once the pass was played from Ezra. At no point did the defence ever get tight enough or were able to step out to make sure that that space that Eze eventually found himself in could be closed down. We didn't close him down. And I will say this on Sanchez, who I actually thought didn't have his worst game. I thought his distribution was very good. I thought he actually commanded his area nicely. What I will say, though, is when it's evident where that ball is going to go, because Eze's got no other option to put that anywhere bar that wraparound right-footed curl that he did, Sanchez should be getting closer to that ball, I think. But other than that, I think he had a good game in terms of being on the ball and controlling his sort of area I just think 
we all know that Sanchez, in terms of shot stopping, isn't great. There was one moment as well when he put his hands up flat and the ball could have gone anywhere. It, luckily, it went over. But ultimately, we all know that Sanchez isn't quite good enough to be um, probably a top six Premier League level goalkeeper. But are Chelsea good enough to be there right now on the evidence that we're seeing either? I'm not sure. Because a one-all draw against the Palace side that were pretty woeful doesn't fill me with much confidence going into this international break and obviously going into the season ahead. So yeah, I'm, in, I'm intrigued to know what you guys think. I'm, I'm just kind of puzzled at the moment with Chelsea because I think Maresca needs time and we need time to understand what he's trying to ask this team to do. And they, as players, might need time to understand what he's trying to ask them to do because I think everyone just looks very unclear at the moment. The sporting directors, I need to address this, and I'm, I was going to do a separate video, but I will just touch on it very quickly. In the four-year window that they, the board as a whole, the sporting directors, the owners, said to judge them on, um, I think they failed. I think they are way below the level. What I will give them credit for is the amount of money that they've put into the club. I think it's shown a level of ambition to spend that amount of money. What I would say, though, is the type of recruitment that's gone on doesn't show a level of ambition um, that would put Chelsea in and amongst the best sides in the Premier League and fighting for European titles as we've done previously over the last 20 years. So I have to question the, the four-year plan. We're left without a suitable defence, in my opinion. We've spent a lot of money on midfielders that really don't look up to the task. And as well as, I will mention this, if they're being asked to play in the positions that they are, I also don't expect them to have good games because they basically didn't play in a central midfield role today like you would expect Enzo and Casado to do. And I have to say that going forward, we've done really well in the recruitment of probably wide players and number 10s, but our strikers looking our strike our forward area in terms of our striker is looking lackluster at the moment I think it lacks quality that you'd expect after spending the amount of money that we have I think our whole team probably falls under that and I think there's been costly mistakes too players like Raheem Sterling put on huge wages are now being loaned out to title competitors in Arsenal Chelsea are miles from that Raheem Sterling's got a better move and um, going to Arsenal than staying at Chelsea in terms of fighting for something We've signed players like Koulibaly that were horrifically wrong. Wesley Fofana and Kukurea. Like, it kind of baffles me. And yeah, this is a match reaction to Crystal Palace. And that's why I was going to make a separate video. But I just want to know your thoughts on where Chelsea are right now. Are you happy with the players at Chelsea? Are you happy with the performances that you're seeing? Is this what you expected from Enzo Maresca? Because I'm going to sit here and be completely honest. I think I've got the wrong idea here. I think I've got the wrong impression of Enzo Maresca. I've looked at footage from Leicester and the football's completely different. I was expecting an entertaining style of play that I actually thought looked all right in the footage that I saw from Leicester. What I've seen as evidence bar one second half against Wolves, which predominantly counter-attacking football against a very weak left-hand side of Wolves' defence, I really can't say I've seen entertaining football or a real type of technical, controlled, stylistic, managerial approach that we were all told Maresca was going to give us. I just haven't seen that. I've seen us have our best opportunities when we've counter-attacked sides and allowed the players to just be free-flowing and sort of on their own instinct, instinctiveness and intuition rather than any sort of tactical approach that the manager might have given them. I just haven't seen the manager have enough of an effect in terms of how Chelsea are playing at the moment. So, yeah, going into the international break, very deflated, very unsure of our recruitment. I think the transfer window wasn't good enough. Um, ultimately, we signed some really good players, but also a lot of mediocrity. Don't forget, Jewsbury Hall was nowhere near playing today, even though he was on the bench. Um, I, I, I'm just not sure of where I think this Chelsea team is capable of finishing this season. It's very, very unpredictable. And a lot of the players are, are incredibly inconsistent, as are we as a team. And, and it looks as if the management might be exactly the same. So let me know your thoughts in the comments down below on that one. A baffling game, an unfortunate game. A first half that was probably just about okay is absolutely finished off with a second half that was so subpar. We ended up losing the second half to Crystal Palace. Not the game, but it did not feel like it might be a loss and it's a definite drop of two points because Palace really weren't that good today. Palace look a long way off the Palace that finished last season. So did Chelsea. 
drop a like on the video if you haven't already we're, we're trying to grow the channel to th towards 3,000 subscribers at the moment i'm loving doing the live streams i'm chatting to so many different people as well and if you haven't already follow me on tiktok and all the other socials instagram twitter because that's where i'm at when i'm not on youtube and you can chat to me about football because that's what i love to do i'll catch you in the next one if we could smash 20 likes i think that'd be unbelievable